Welcome to Grants Rock Warehouse, and tonight we are live, and Rachel is in the house. Tonight we're just going to have one of our discussions. God knows where it's going to go, but uh, get it in the chat. Please chime in. Here we go. Talking bands no one talks about. Grants Rock Warehouse. Hey, good, good night or good evening, depending on where you're at. Uh, hey, Rachel, nice to see you. How are you? Oh, Grant, always a pleasure. We try and do this once a uh, month. Yeah, he's yeah. got all the bells and whistles. It's like, uh, are you familiar with Sarah the Rage and Tomato? No. She's the young lady that's come by over on our channel. Uh, uh, William uh, Vinyl, Pumping Vinyl brought her over. And it's just a very nice lady. And um, But she's like you. She does the countdown and creates a sense of energy and mm -hmm. anticipation of what could possibly be a really great show. So uh, I just love our get-togethers. It's so casual. So laid back, they're much like my own live stream without all the nonsense, and uh, so it's a great, uh, a great opportunity to hang out, talk some records and okay. and music, and what's going on with our channel, some vinyl community, whatever the heck we want to talk about. So, right. thanks so, for having me. Oh man, it's always fun. I'm glad to have you here. Yeah, this show it's much to put together because I we've done it before. I have everything all ready to go. <laughs> Just yeah, with the, the 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 light, yeah, the lights, camera, action. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to show you something I've, I've recently picked up. I got in a lot of trouble from my own people with it, but I love it. And uh, it's the 50th anniversary. It's the ACDC. This is, I've got nine albums. I went out and bought all nine that are in the series. They're on this gorgeous gold packaging. So oh, man. I'll show the kids what you get here. I tell you what, Chillins, here's what you get. So it comes, this is side two. Bang, bang, bang. For those about to rock, we salute you. But it's just absolutely gorgeous. There's a lot of hype going around with it. Let me square that up properly. No, but you can see it's nice. kind of a modeled. Uh, it's not like dirt or anything on there. It's just a modeled finish that's intentional. Like it's not raised or bumped, but it's just this kind of like a beaten gold kind of idea, right? And each album tries to recreate what the original was. So as far as the reissue goes, it's pretty darn good. So, like, no expense is spared. Like, that is embossed. Let me get it out of here. Well, let me ask you this. Is that part of that new audio file series? Is that Rhino? No, it's well, not. It's not. What is it? It's not. It's just uh, from the ACDC.com and their okay. partners. Uh, for those about the rock, all embossed. This, the Canon wheel, embossed just like the original. Super nice gatefold recreated and then of course it's got you know the coloring on it with the the stickers the hype stickers uh each one has a uh, an inner sleeve with it and in addition to that you get each one comes with a generic angus young right you get the generic acdc 50 oh, cool. each album has this somewhat generic but uh made or tailored for each individual album so there is some nice work put into it. The question is, how do they sound? They're digital. So they're from the original masters, digitally processed like anything you get from Abbey Road, boys and girls. Yeah. And George Marino's the mastering engineer. But I learned today there's a guy named Jay Janos uh, who's uh, probably did the lacquer cuts on these things back in 2003. George Marino passing away in 2012, I think it was, and uh, an old hand at uh, mastering. But they, they're a great series of records. Um, you get uh, Highway to Hell, uh, Dirty Deeds, Dunder Cheap, Back in Black, uh, Razor's Edge, and on and on and on it goes. Now, what's interesting, Grant, is there's a UK version of all these, but there's also a US Canada one. I got the U.S. Canada one. Nobody's put any of these Canada U.S. ones on Discogs, so I just put the reason I got this one here yeah. is I uh, put this on Discogs. So if you end up buying this vinyl community, I uh, know that Rachel's Ghost did the heavy lifting, took the pictures of the album cover and the back and the pieces that come with it, and put it up there. But uh, each album's uh, different. They also include this double live album. Uh, they're going to be releasing Fly on the Wall uh, and um, God, what, Kill the Switch or whatever it's called? Flip the Switch. 
flip the switch. Uh, those are coming out later, but the first nine are these, including the debut um, high voltage and uh, powerage and all the rest of their power rage, right? So it's all there. Anyway, so that, that was a big chunk of coin. Beatles news, uh, Grant. Uh, we had uh, Mr. Sticker Mania come in yesterday over on my show. We did a nice little get together. Mr. Beetle Mania, for those that don't know, or not Mr. Beetle Mania, Mr. Sticker Mania, for those that don't know, Mr. Sticker Mania is an eBay seller and he flips all these Beetle collectibles. So he goes, Rachel, I got a Let It Be Sealed Naked. Let It Be Naked Sealed from 2003. You interested? I'll sell it to you for 200 USD. I go, shit. Yeah. I go, 200 USD. You know? I go, I'm Canadian. So this is going to, you're going to go have some, add some more coin on that. I, I went, he said, 25 bucks, ship it up there. I go, all right, let's do it. Canadian, uh, final total Canadian dollars. So let it be naked, 325. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with it because Susie and I, my much better half Sue, we went. I we went to the dentist. Both of us. She had a root canal, and I, I saw some other procedure. Myself, I'm getting two crowns put on. I'm going with gold. I love gold. I'm well, you might. Well, it depends upon where you're getting the crowns. If they're up right. front. No, they're in the back. Yeah, right. get gold in the back. So get gold in the back. Room. Gold in the back room. But I'm telling you, man, it's like six thousand bucks. Boom, gone like that over six k, right? Yeah. Well, we were supposed to have this show, but we rescheduled it because you well, were because of that, right? You had some uh, work done. Yeah. So, well, that was just today that happened. No, we had to reschedule because so, were we in town or a doctor's appointment? Yeah, something was something. Going on. Something was up. Yeah. And hey, it, Star. Nice to see you. Oh, no. You know what that was? That was, yeah, it was the first part of that. You know, the first part is we got an x-ray yet. Oh, yeah. We want to take a look. Yeah. I had to go in and get x-rayed and they look at what's going on and all the rest of it, right? Please don't buy fly on the wall. Have some mercy. Well, I want to say that Martin Popoff, he thinks yeah. that Flick of the Switch is like one of the best ACDC albums. It's a, it's a great album. So it's much later more. in the career. It's later in the career. So yeah. I can see why there's a question mark on it just by virtue of that. Most of the people like in the earlier stuff. Hey, Harry, how are you? Um, yeah. Also, Harry says 200 USD is pretty good for a sealed copy. Really? Harry goes 200 bucks USD for a sealed copy of Let It Be Naked Fair. And Harry's got a huge Beatles collection, too. So he's kind of another Beatles nut. Such as I'm myself. trying to find where he said that. Is that? Uh, oh, there it is. I see it. So he says two hundred dollar U.S. for a sealed copy of what? Let it be naked. Let it be naked. Wow. Yeah. Have you got Let It Be Naked on CD? I got or? it on CD. I don't have yeah. an album. I got it on CD. Uh, yeah. Highway to Hell. Fly on the wall. Fly on the wall. I only own on CD right now, but I'm, I want to get the other thing. Uh, like I want to get it on when it comes out. I may as well get the discography and just have done with it. And those the original uh, ACDC CDs, the original ones that came out yeah. like in the 80s, sound fine. Yeah, I'm sure they do. And of course, where's your collecting these days? Is it, are you buying more CDs than vinyl or mm -hmm. which one? Or it is going that way for the you. The only thing that I bought, where is it? Oh, here it is. Yeah, I buy some new vinyl, the switch. which is weird. The Road band Roadmaster, you uh, familiar with them? No, I'm not at all. They're like, uh, this came out, I think, 77. They're a lot like REO Speedwagon, a lot of that AOR kind of stuff, kind of like... Pretty from a friend. Pretty uh, from a friend. But on uh, Sea of Tranquility, we are going to rank the catalog of Roadmaster. The stuff you guys get into over there. Every time I hear you're going over there, like, don't you sometimes dream that uh, Pardo would be there and go, you know, I'm going to need you, Grant. And we're doing, we're going all in on the Beatles. I need you there. Instead, it's like, oh, it's, uh, have you got three jacks in a jail? They're pretty good. And we're going to be going a deep dive on three jacks in a jail. And it's like, you go, geez, you know, part of, we could get like a million views uh, if you'd give me, you know. 
Well, I know. Let me. Seems like you. he wants. I don't know what the rhyme or reason is, but you know, we've been. We did bread. We did Badfinger. We did. Oh, I like that. <laughs> we did player. We did yeah. Pablo Cruz. Yeah. Uh, but and those there, bands, up, that's <laughs> like second tier. Those bands are like second tier bands mm-hmm. to me, right? For the moment. This though, I was really surprised. Mm-hmm. Uh, this album never got released on CD. And Todd Rundgren produces like a couple of tracks on it. And the rest yeah. of it is produced by Kirk Butler and Mike Green. I don't know their work. But uh, yeah, you only can get this on vinyl. And Rock Candy released the rest of the Roadmaster albums on CD. So, and I think they're out of print now, but. Yeah. Um, big news, of course, uh, May 8th, it's been mentioned at Peter Gallery. Uh, Disney, Disney Plus in particular, getting Let It Be, the long moratorium uh, Michael Lindsay Hogg original film of the Beatles breakup, uh, the, uh, the whole sordid mess, 1970, and uh, it's been unavailable for years, finally getting streaming. And I would assume, much like Get Back, Peter Jackson, Peter Jackson restoring the film, we should get physical copy in about a year, It would be my guess. You think? I think so. I hope I so. I think so. What do you think? I can only hope. Spider Sense tingling? I mean, well, when they were going to make that big Beatles announcement, you know what I thought it was going to be? I thought they, they were going to release the entire oh. directoral cut of Get Back and not, that's what I thought it would have been. Oh, like with extra footage and the whole thing before, you know, Peter Jackson cut it down the whole nine hours. I thought it was going to be that, but oh, well, Gosh, it's a full show. I, the, the Blu-ray, isn't it the full show that the people saw on the streaming? Isn't yeah, it? But but it? That's not the whole thing. It was no, cut. The whole thing. It took no. two hours out of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's, but and then but everybody all the beetle fans are going where where's the whole where's the entire cut where's the director's yeah. cut i thought that that's what they would release yeah. i think that would have went over like probably even more yeah. with the beetle fans than let it be in general but you know mm-hmm. it's going to look great if he's going to go back and redo it well it, i mean it's obviously it's going to use a lot of the restored footage that he did before but just to see the old 1970 classic as it as i remember it was a big deal when I first saw it in the 70s, and I saw it at the theater. I went to see it at the theater. So I saw it a couple of times at the movie theater uh, for a special release around 73 or so. Thanks, Scar. Exactly. That's what I want to see. But, you know, whatever. It's fine. Um, so anyway, so they're, th- that's starting uh, streaming the, the original Michael Lindsay Hogg. Then coming up, I'm going to guess, in about a year's time. They did it with Get Back. If they release that, there's money to be made. People will buy it. I'll buy it. If it's available, do it. Make it available. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll watch it for sure. Um, more Beatles news. Record Store Day. Tiny little three-inch Beatle records with a customized Beatle-branded record player limited to so many. They're going to go for big, big bucks. And you want to believe they're going to be on eBay People selling them for a choice dollar. Yeah. I don't think I'll be hitting record store day. Are you going to go? No, no, not. You're going to that record store? Uh, there's a record store in town here. Yeah, on Sunday I'll be going. Because uh, one of our friends, uh, Pat's Radio, is going to be there. So I, I want to go check that out, and that'll be fun. Yeah, See, right? Harry would watch 50 hours of all that Beatles footage if it was out. I I am totally with you. Release the director's cut. Give it to us. It's done. Release it's the cut. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Wait Herman a Masloff. Hey, Mazzy. Uh, Mazzy, boy, he's a, he, he sure knows his Beatles stuff, I tell you. But so does Harry. Harry's another one. Uh, we Trouble got with a capital T. That's me. That, I think he means me. Oh, yeah, well, Mazzy. You know, he's my distant cousin. Did I tell you that? I've he's heard like, of that. You mentioned that before. Yeah, he's like a distant, distant cousin there. He matches well, his DNA testing, and he matches my mom. Well, Mazzy, would, don't you want to see the entire director's cut of Get Back? Give us the extra two hours that were cut out. 
Yeah. I'd rather, like I said, I don't know when he came in, but I'd rather see that than let it be, you know, but whatever. It's fine. Uh, oh. Anything you're excited. I always ask people, are we, anything you're looking forward to getting or anything coming down the, the line for yourself? Uh, no, but Sh Stephen Schnee's turning me on to a lot of stuff. Yeah. We've no, been doing a lot of shows and he just, anybody's watched are Stephen Schnee. Are you guys Schnee. in the same, same musical pocket? Are you guys like both power poppers, sunshine pop, that kind of deal? <laughs> Mazzy. He's like, yeah, sure, whatever. Doesn't, he's not a hardcore Beatles fan, for God's sake. Oh, he's hardcore. But uh, what am I? Oh, there's all kinds of stuff. China Crisis evidently has a, a, I guess you would call it a besta, but it's not. It's like the band went back to their, some people may think this is a sin. Yeah. But they went back to their original multi-tracks and de-85'd them. So, so to speak, it took all that. 80s production out of it yeah. and all the extra you know flourishes and stuff and uh they're gonna redo that and i haven't heard it yet but he speaks really highly of it if you're into china crisis they never really did take off too much in the state so uh, yeah i don't know if i would even recognize a china crisis song i think you'd hear i think if they had their big they had one they're like a one-hit wonder uh, for me here were they anything yeah. in canada no, I think a one hit wonder in Canada. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's my buddy, uh, Pat's radio, right above Eddie, right there. Pat's radio, him and I are getting together on Sunday. I'm going to see him at Nanaimo. I'm in Nanaimo, British Columbia, Vancouver Island. Uh, Pat's coming over from Vancouver, so we're going to get together and just have a coffee and talk about the VC. And he's going to look at some records. And Ernesto, you know, there's no CD day. Come on, give it some time, it'll come back. Yeah, but you know what? With Compact Disc, whenever they have Record Store Day, there's always a deal on a Compact Disc in the store as well to be seen. There's always never CDs are still not dead, folks. I still collect them. Yeah, me too. Hey, Patch Radio. Yes, I do know the Scruffs. Uh, Stephen Schnee and I are doing like a Power Pop show once a month, and the last show that we did a couple weeks ago, I played a track by the Scruffs. Yeah, great stuff. I'm not sure if any of their stuff ever really got released on CD or anything or released on really anything because that was like mid 70s, man. I, yeah, but we have uh, played some of that. CD has a fading pulse, interesting comment, too. They tried CD, it lasted two years. Hmm. Did it? Hmm. Well, according to Mazzy, it did. Yeah, all depends upon who you talk to. Apple scruffs. Yeah, and let's talk about CDs because one of the okay. vibrant, viable ways of uh, the compact disc doing well and continuing to do well is when it comes out in the form of these great box sets. So mm -hmm. you look at John Lennon's Mind Games. They've done an EP uh, in glow-in-the-dark color and standard EPs for Record Store Day, but later this year, in, I think July or something, John Lennon's uh, Mind Games album, getting the uh, full box set treatment, expanded edition, beautiful packaging, all the rest of it. So DC doesn't work with DC's lifestyle. Daddy Bog, you CDs on Bose speakers, you can't go wrong. What the hell? He has to be joking. Yeah, I think he is. He's a character. Bose speakers, good God. Yeah. God nice to meet DC Tim Time. He's a good guy. Yeah, I like DC. We've got the uh, artists, uh, you know. DC and I on Sunday are doing a listening party. Okay. And we're just going to pick well, really what it's about is to turn you on to these bands and stuff. Yeah. So we're just going to go through our catalogs and just pick random stuff that we like. It could be funk, it could be soul, it could be mm -hmm. rock, it could be whatever, all the above. And we're just going to play stuff and uh, just try to turn people onto some stuff. That we like. Now that's interesting because like when you talk about soul and stuff, I finally, over on my art channel, we were talking about uh, Stevie wonder and talking book. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so I got talking book. of course it's got superstition. I wanted to get it because of superstition, right? It's so funky in the way it goes. And I, you know, like I'm pretty whitewashed, you know, admittedly with all that, but here's the deal. There's a song on there called, I believe if I fell in love with you, it would be forever. 
That song was covered by a Canadian group, uh, and I forget the, even the name of them, but they were on, like on the Mushroom label. They they had a 45, and in Canada, they did a pop, kind of like a power pop, a sunshine pop version of the song, mm -hmm. and I just loved it. I played it for the people on my channel. Yeah, They are hating it. They go, you killed all the soul, all the depth and the meaning that Stevie Wonder imbued it. It's a Stevie song. But I love that's the one I grew up with. I believe if I fell in love with you, that's a great song. Forever, yeah, and it's just a popping little piece, and it's one of the first songs ever to appear on the Mushroom, Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, Canada Mushroom label, and of course, uh, Heart uh, debuted their career on the uh, Mushroom label. So it was a big thing in Vancouver for a while. It no longer exists, unfortunately. <laughs> But many of the players in there became very influential uh, in the uh, Canadian music scene. Those original uh, um, Stevie Wonder CDs, like inter the first pressing, like on CD, Intervisions. Yeah. Those, God, those original CDs sound killer. Say this is a thing, right? So they did it right when they first came out, but this is before the sound wars and busting you know uh, what do they call it you know uh loudness uh, walling them yeah brick, brick walling, walling and all that has that calmed down because i haven't really kept track uh i thought that maybe they were kind of laying back on the brick walling of newer stuff maybe not i'm sure all the taylor swift stuff's really jacked up Probably still. There's probably a lot in it. Yeah. I don't really pay attention to anything new. So I know I for know. our classic stuff, though, that we go out and buy, I don't have all my, my CD box sets. They're mostly around the corner right here. But, um, you know, they're nice to have. And, of course, you know who loves uh, CDs is this lady right here, DJ Trish. DJ from Trish. Jersey. She's, a, she's a compact disc girl. Yeah, she likes it. Yeah. I think Maslow's probably uh, right. I believe it was. I believe it was using the closing credits of High Fidelity. Great movie. God, I love that movie. What else? Yeah, DJ Trish. She's in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Um. Okay. Yeah, High Fidelity with uh, John Cusack. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got a. We got a copy of that. I think I've only got it on DVD. I'd like to get obviously Blu-ray. I'm getting spoiled. I got a 4K TV. Uh, Sony Bravia. So now I'm spoiled. I like these 4K things and Blu-ray, and it's almost a crime to watch anything on uh, DVD. I'm just I'm becoming a a snob. A, what do you call it? audiophile snob? I get a that. Audiophile snob. I got a lot of Criterion. I love the Criterion. We still are using a 2009 uh, Panasonic Plasma, oh. 42 inch. Okay. 45. I'd have. I wouldn't be able to do it. It's too small. I, I, I'm at 65, and if I go larger next time around, five years, ten years, you can be big headed. I don't think we have enough room to support anything that large. Oh, we do. Well, you're lucky. For 75 inch, we could go bigger of uh, TV. There is room. Maureen, you are right. Goodwill does have a lot of, well, not a lot. You have to go and look every now and then. You got to go through. And there's this place for 12 bucks. Yeah, you get the CD players out your yin yang. Um, but yeah, Eddie, know, Eddie's a gun movie guy, by the way. Eddie Perez, he's yeah. got a huge collection, and he's been very kind to me, gifted me a couple of criterions of all things, and uh, he's just a super good guy and uh, very generous. But he's a movie guy, too. He loves movies, collects them. DVD equals poo-poo. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Oh, DJ Trish wants to know how your dentist visit. I, I mean, I got a little pain, and there was one nerve that they kept hitting when they were drilling out. What's that? You weren't completely frozen. I guess I wasn't completely frozen. Oh, Keith. And anyway, so it was like, I go, ah, that's a bit. It's about a five out of ten on the oh, pain geez. level. Oh. The guy goes, that's too high. He goes, oh, well, we'll, so we'll zap you some more. And I even then I could still a little bit, but I would I could take it. You know, you have to bite the bullet sometimes. I got through it. Getting gold crowns in there, Trish. So there gold. Go. I'm going. I love gold. <laughs> I'm going to have gold back there. Uh, Harry has a 19 inch Sony Trinitron, so uh, he's oh, yeah. old school. Now hold on. Here's the thing, though. I do. I still have my old TV, or did I get rid of it? Yeah. Have we got it here? I'm nostalgic to a fault. 
So, Grant, I love having those old TVs like mom and dad had. And, like, you know, do you have a remote control? They weren't invented. I was the remote. So turn the channel, kid. Yeah, okay, dad. You know, and you go over. And there was only three channels to do from. So it's fuzz, 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 channel. And then yeah. adjust the rabbit ears so that that would come in. It's taking up closet space is what it's doing. Yeah, I think we used to have a 19-inch Trinitron. It, those Trinitrons were absolutely beautiful, though. But how big is ours? It's like a 14-inch or if something. If you got rid of your Beatles records down there, you could display your little TV. What are you talking about, get rid of my Beatles yeah, records? If you freed up that space right there. I'm not getting rid of my Beatles records. <clears throat> oh, that's, a, that's hurtful, Sue. Don't say stuff like that. Don't upset her. Boy, oh boy. I'm sorry you had to witness me emotionally stressed final community. Uh, three inch TV screen, no TV no without cable. cable. Well, what do you want? Know? I don't know what that means. Yeah. Quasar 21 inch console. Harry, do you even have high def? He's got a good system. Harry's okay. got, I don't know about TV and stuff, but he's certainly, he's got a great music system. I don't have it anymore, but in the day. Okay. No way that tooth is coming out. All right. <laughs> Wait a minute. Maureen, I've been playing my 1085 Quasar cassette boombox. Sounds fantastic. I've got Did a San Diego boombox. Do you carry it on your shoulder? How do you, do, you know, walk around with the boombox? My boombox needs work, though, because sometimes it, I don't know. You're better off just abandoning that and just getting one of those portable speakers and just. One of our people was feeling nostalgic for what I think it was Bit Bop Boom. Yeah. Bit Bop Boom went out and bought a boom box. He was looking for one and he got the exact one he used to own when he was like a teenager. So it had a lot of sentimental cachet for him. That's what I did. I went and found a guy had a 1986. No, I take it back. 82. Yeah, when I was in high school, Sanyo boombox, and I bought it. But it sounds great. I, I remember it sounding a lot better back in the day than it does now. <laughs> See, well, there is that, right? I like I in 1982, I went out and I bought a set of uh, Boston acoustic A150 speakers with a, a Dutch Phillips seven seven turntable. And probably some junk amplifier. I, I've never put the money into my amp. Although this time around, I got like a uh, Marantz amp. But I've also got a preamp, a budgie preamp, which is a really nice little tubular thing mm -hmm. that goes with a solid state to warm the sound up a bit. So it's kind of fun to play around with gear, but it can be a bottomless pit that you go in into, right? And with the speakers and Oh, I got to have these. But I sometimes I get that nostalgic thing. I go, what would it be like if I rebuilt my old system? Wouldn't that, with the same old turntable, same old speakers, you know, it'd be kind of fun. Ernesto says, if you, you never repair boom boxes, you just replace them. Well, that's part of the problem. You can't replace them. Um, okay, we got to do some love for Leslie Gore. Here, we're going to give okay. love for Leslie Gore. Daddy Buck, there's the comment. Uh, your response, Grant, to Leslie Gore. Uh, yeah. I don't have any Leslie Gore. Okay, but do do you do you have any love for? Leslie? Oh, I think she's. Uh, I'm indifferent. I don't have okay. any Leslie Gore. If you played me Leslie Gore, I don't know if I would recognize Leslie Gore. Okay, uh, the one. Well, this is my party, and I'll cry if I want to. We I would recognize have, that. That's a big hit. But the other one, I really liked. Uh, uh, is a. What the heck is that the one, you know, where she goes, uh, it's her man-hating song. What's the man-hating song Leslie Gore did? Al Gore. <laughs> Al Gore. Al Gore, I will kick did he her. Produce? I can't believe this. I just, you say Al Gore, I just immediately think of Tipper Gore. <laughs> Tipper, yeah. Let's put the boy. It's not suitable for family. With it's my part. No, what's the one about the, you don't own me. Harry's right. Oh. You don't know me. You know. That I can do what I want to do. I, and I can go anywhere. I can do anything. You know, it's that kind of song. Uh, you don't own me. You know. 
Harry, you're right. Some of those boom boxes are pretty collectible. Uh, what is the one uh, Tech Moan? You ever watch his show? Comes out like every. Okay, Saturday. I know, I know who he is. Yeah. Well, you remember the the boom box that's on the cover of LL Cool J's record from like nineteen whatever. Uh, see, I miss that whole scene. I'm not. A well, rapper. I'm not a LL a Cool J guy. I can't rap to save my life. Final community. Evidently, that boom box that's on yes. the front of that. Yes. Tech Moan, he bought one of those. Okay. And. It is the boom box of all boom boxes. Really? What about the one in uh, the rights? Do the right thing. Oh, do, the, you know, uh, is that what it is? I keep thinking. Do he the had right. a boom box in that? The oh, guy Judy, had the boom John box. John Cusack. Judy's turned to cry. <laughs> Judy's turned to cry. <laughs> Rachel sings that curtains move. It's absolutely true. <laughs> oh look, are you drinking, Mazzy? He's not drinking. Uh -uh. Hmm, interesting. I hope he's okay. Well, he's a bit of a oh, drink. Oh, I love Klaus Nomi. Yeah, but, but you spelled it wrong, Marlon. Spelled wrong, yeah. It's the internet. Spelling's optional. It's okay. <laughs> it wouldn't we wouldn't have the internet. Was he responsible for that? I got uh do the right thing in 4K. So see that's when I, I put invested the money in. Harry's inhaling. I don't I don't I don't buy anything like that. I don't buy any. The only thing that I do want yeah. is the Blu-ray set. You remember back in the day when the monkeys brought out the mm -hmm. series on Blu-ray and then they lost them or something. Oh, and now if you go on the monkey site, now you can buy the box set of Blu-ray. So you get, you get the movie head, you get yeah. 33 and a third revolutions per monkey. You get the entire series. And there are some people that, uh, and of course they, you know, they went through and they restored the whole series. Yeah. That I, I know you're a big, you're a big monkey. Fan. Yeah, so the monkey. series must be available. It would be great if they had the series and they package it with a little monkey shirt with the twin buttons that go down. They might. And then I would also like a little monkey mobile put inside the thing as a package. But is anybody here in the chat have that monkey's box set, the Blu-ray, the series? Set by community. It's absolutely, the restoration on that is absolutely beautiful. Man, it's a beautiful. I really want it. Uh oh, Harry's not keen on Head or 33. Head is a brilliant film. Didn't we talk about this before, Harry? We've been here because of our monkey love, and Harry's a monkey fan. He loves the monkeys. What is it about the movie Head you dislike? I think it's brilliant. A lot of uh, student, a lot of film students, they look at that film and and study it. I mean, maybe at the time it didn't jive with anybody. I'm surprised. Maybe yeah. you had to be at a midnight movie stoned or on LSD to get it, but it's considered a cult classic, and it's pretty advanced for its time yeah you can come up i'm good with it hang on uh let me sure i don't care it's up to rachel i'm really relaxed i love harry harry can come up all right i'll put this uh, uh, fun hanging out together i just got his channel's uh taken off everybody by the way uh grant you're doing great the the numbers are showing yeah, the proof is in the pudding. Good things are happening. Yeah, we, looks like we're going to talk monkeys. If you got monkey stuff, I'm all ready. Here oh, I is. did get something today. Uh oh. I oh, did get something. Yeah. Today. This Pisces, is. Of course, yeah. of course, we know that Pisces never got the uh, Pisces never got the treatment, the Rhino handmade treatment. But I got the two CD set, so it's got the mono mix, and yeah. I got that today. Harry, you got a good yeah, gift. That's there. a great Let's album. I got this at half price books last week. Let's make them big so yeah. we can look at them all big. Oh, shit. That was the wrong button. Hang what on, Harry. Make, we're going to make it go I'm trying big. to make it. How do I make it big? Down below, there's a little blue button. You're big. Now make Harry go big. Well, I don't now know. Now I'm big. Oh, now where's Harry? Oh, where's Harry? oh the blue Anyways. button. Anyways, this is fine. You no, can seriously, see this how do I make him big? Serious, seriously, tell me. This is from 2002, so I was surprised to find it still in the original box. But I don't want to ban you. Oh, I know how to do it. There it is. Show there us you again. Go. Holy <laughs> crap! Is so is that die cast? Yes, it's one. Uh, what is it? One eighth scale. 
one eighteenth scale. Nice. Oh, I want one. One eighteenth. So that's a big scale. Yeah. You said you got that at half price books. Half price books for twenty five bucks. Holy crap! I love that. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. So Harry, you got any other monkey no. stuff? We're talking no, monkey no, stuff. Um, I got this. This um. <laughs> Joey Callio from Dada sent yeah. me some stuff. And, he, and he said, this is an iron-on transfer, but I'm not going to iron it on. I'm going to keep it. So what is it about the movie head you dislike? It's a horrible movie. Why it's, is it? It's, just don't say it's, it's horrible. Great, I don't love the music. It. It's a great album. But the movie is just so disjointed, and it wasn't the right vehicle for them. But just the whole it. idea was was to break that mold. You know, well, they they did that. <laughs> it's like a monkey's episode on steroids is what it really is. You know? They uh, like they, when yeah. the original series ran, one of the episodes in the last season, they actually did a, a black and white. Well, it was black and white on my TV, but they did a concert like it was a concert film episode. And I didn't like that because I like them joking around, running around doing monkey stuff. I, I find it hard to watch the old TV shows now because of that, because of the zaniness and stuff you know i mean when i was 13 i loved it but but now it's like what do I you want to hear the music i, I like the super monkeys whether the super monkeys and peter and throwing darts in one of the opening episode john lennon wears a dart yeah <laughs> okay well that's all i didn't want to I just no no to that's you it that. uh pisces did get pressed for rhino yeah yeah but yeah, whatever. I've got the original cold gems. I don't need that. The monkeys yeah. didn't have a van. It was a mystery crew. Scooby Doo had the van. Though uh, right. Steve Hoffman doesn't think very highly of those original cold gems albums, as far as pressing quality. But well, you know. was anything really good then? Especially well, from cold gems. Pet sounds back in the day that you know they those mid sixties capital pressings were not very good. Yeah. Well. But, yeah. you know, if you yeah. got a, a purple label or a green label, Capital really got their crap together as far as... You got to remember, too, when, when I bought those new, when they came out, I was playing them on a, a, a suitcase kind of a turntable. They were the speakers. You open it up, and the speakers folded out. You know, you didn't... There was no fidelity of any sort. Well, the most so sure as an age where yeah. humor changes. I don't know. I remember when... Remember when they were playing... Uh, the monkeys like in '86 on MTV when I couldn't get enough of it, and then I saw them on that tour in '86 when they went out. And they were great. Nice. I saw them play in San Francisco after a Giants game. We went to the game just because when the game was over, they rolled out a like a flatbed and the monkeys set up and they played a concert. So that was pretty cool. Well, normally Sue doesn't get on here and. She hasn't been on. She doesn't have a wrench because she hasn't been on here yapping. Yeah, she does. I can fix. Yapping. I can fix that. <laughs> okay, What's I'm that? gonna say. I don't good, like I'm it there more. I, All right. I just wanted to show you that. All, All right, I appreciate it. All right, hey, we'll thanks, see you. All Harry. Right. Great seeing that. Harry's music room, kids. I keep wanting to say vagisil, vag, vaginal, vaginal, vaginal. I don't know vaginal. Do you know vaginal? Oh, I sure know vaginal. Vaginal. I may be William Pump and Vinyl or something. What did you want to come up and show us? He wanted to. Yeah, you there. probably don't want to see that. I don't know. You do it. Well, take a look at him behind scenes. As my would be my advice. Cold him like Hanna Bar Hanna Barbera records. Yeah. <laughs> what? Anyway, I still like the monkeys and I do want to see, there's some footage, you know, people have put on YouTube of the yeah. Blu-ray off the Blu-ray and it's just stunning. The restoration. And I yeah, just I don't look at it that way. You're so right about it. Like when you get a nice restoration on an old film, you go, oh my God, you know, I get it. And 4K is like that with a good TV, mm -hmm. beautiful stuff. I don't think Jack, I don't think Jack directed it. He wrote it or helped co-write it with uh, Ray Fulson and they all were out in a desert or something. I don't know. Mickey Dolans might add something to do with it, but I think Ray Fulson directed it. 4K yeah. is a ticket. Well, I don't know if I'll ever get there. 
Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I mean, if you have it, it it's great. It makes a difference on some films. And, and not all 4K is e uh, created equally. I have to open up my YouTube so I can give wrenches. I don't even. I'm not even have. I don't even have anybody up. <laughs> Jesus, didn't know it was going to be so popular. When you have Rachel on here, it's popular. Vaginal docs to William, so I'm probably not him. Says vaginal. Holy smokes! Wait a minute. Let me bring this up. Vaginal, did you get blocked on my program? I have no idea. I can't, I've seen you around, but I think probably. Is, was he banned? Well, um, yeah, I block people if they act out or if it gets goofy. If they go after, usually they go after Rob and I have to block them. All right. Okay, now we can go. I can give some wrenches out. You guys all, all right. seem cool. Susie, go say hello, and then he'll give you a wrench. How do I, what do you mean? Oh, well, I, just say, make a comment. Oh, okay. well, I got you. You don't have to say that. I found you. Rachel, you blocked me after I said my first hello, but it's okay. No, I won't block anybody just for saying hello. You time them. You might get timed You'll get timed out for, but I wouldn't time you out. Somebody else timed out. No, you got to, you got to act up. You got to attack. You got to go on the attack. Then I block you. I don't think you have, you don't have a wrench on my program. Not with that name. You're just going to be, you know, you're, you're going to suffer whatever happens with people with the wrenches. Everybody in my show's got a wrench. So you may have blocked them. You like, you'd like, you dig Grand Funk Railroad, huh? Hmm. I like, now, yeah. first, I like two albums. Mark Morris. Mark, how's it going? Mark's a good guy. Mark's a really nice Mark guy. Mark doesn't have a wrench. Yeah, Mark's totally, he's gold. He's golden, I tell you. All right. Well, please like, subscribe if you haven't. Yeah. I never All say right. that, but I'm saying it today. Yeah. Okay. I try to chat, but they don't show up. I'm blocked. All right. I'll unblock you, Vaginal. Just behave yourself. If you're blocked, I don't know if you're blocked or not. I really don't. I have, I have no I idea. I couldn't. I beg him. I know in real life, John. That's John. He's a super good guy. Maureen likes Grand Funk. I only dig the. Well, I shouldn't say that. I like kind of the later Grand Funk, when they got rid of the uh, uh, Terry. What was the manager's name? Help me, Terry. Oh, I have no idea. Shit! What was his name? What was the manager's Grand Funk manager's name? I like that. Who's like the manager that. for uh, Grand Funk? Prague Hat? No, you're not blocked here, of course. I don't think no. I I have anyone blocked. Well, you're not blocked. My show's too crazy. Terry Knight. People get in trouble. I Terry like Knight. the later stuff, like from Phoenix up. I like it when Todd Rundgren came on because Todd knew exactly what to do. <laughs> Marlon, I don't like shirtless Grand Funk at all, but... Todd Runger knew exactly what to do with Grand Funk. They needed a strong producer. Todd knew how to get those songs into shape, and he knew they should utilize. They were part they of the soundtrack as a teenager for us. Like um, uh, uh, Little Eva, they covered Locomotion for Little Eva on Shine On, the, the album with the, the 3D glasses. Mm -hmm. Hard to find that album with the glasses in. You need a reissue so we can get the 3D glasses with it. We're going to look at that prog hat. I think that might know. The next one we're going to look at, I think we're going to look at BM Bolt's going to come on the, because we're kind of doing that to, no, DC's doing it. DC Toon Time. We're doing oh, it. Yeah. I'm getting everybody confused. But we're going to look at uh, Phoenix. We haven't looked at, at that one. Yeah. But then we're going to look at, is it good singing, good playing, the Frank Zappa one? Yeah, we're going to look at that. I haven't really heard them. So. All right, Vaginal, give it a, Give it the old college try tomorrow. I'll make sure that I'll check out uh, before I go live tomorrow. I'll look for your name. Yeah, I'm there's gonna... DC. DC's going to be, oh. too. yeah, we're going to do Phoenix. But I'm curious, Harry, why you like everything up to American Band? Why is that? No, it's like I, we shouldn't. Harry should the left. I have all these questions for Harry. Harry's here. I know. Phoenix. Why do you not like? I like American Phoenix. Band. American Band's a great song. That's okay. anthemic. That I old. think Shining On's the best one. Shining On is very popular. 
But I like American Band too. That Not was... yet, Trish. I'm still working through these other ones. I don't have that much. To... <laughs> I'm so busy. It's hard for me to get through anything. God. On time. Yeah, we. I don't know. Did we do that one, DC? On time. Which one's that? That's the one that's got I'm Your Captain, right? We haven't looked at that one yet. Oh, Daddy Bug, you got to be there for that. If you do a Beach Boys. Royce is doing a Beach Boys show Sunday night. Yeah. There. Wait a minute. Here we go. <laughs> and ladies and uh -oh. gentlemen, he's uh -oh. back. He's fired up tonight. So, what's going yeah, but, I mean, what's the deal with Grand Funk? Because like all, all the girls of the world beware. That's where I lost him from there on. And the second live album's okay. But you like the Todd stuff. Do you like what Todd did? Oh, I thought with... Where an American Band was a great album. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's produced by Todd. But that can yeah. I mean see that came out uh that came out in 73. So I liked them through 73. All the girls in the world beware came out in 74. I do have Shining On, but Shining I Shining On's my favorite. Shining On was big for our age glasses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But see, Harry, I was one of those anti grand funk people. I couldn't stand oh, them. Man, the, the, the Red Album, On Time, Closer to Home, Live, E Pluribus Unum, they're all really good albums. Yeah, they're straight ahead rock and roll. But we yeah. looked at the live album, and that album drove me crazy because. Oh, the first live album? I put yeah, that because of that damn fuzz bass. From, that fuzz bass from Mel drives me up the wall. Oh, man, it's so good. I wish I could have seen them. And I've never seen them. But... What is it about that record you like? So I'm the asking. Energy. The, the energy. energy. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it just, it just it almost like makes a hair stand up on my show, my uh, my arms, you know? Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. I think DC likes that record, too, and I think that was one of the things that he mentioned. Is that the one with the, the three heads? Yeah. DC, are you still here? Where are you? Great songs. Great stuff. But I is don't that know. the album where the three heads of the guy and then it's Grand Funk written in red? That's closer to home. Closer home, right? I, yeah, but they're all good. I mean, and that's a live album as well. DC, and, you know, come up Mark here. Farner's hair like went down to the middle of his back. He had the longest hair in rock and roll, I think, at the time. I come just, on, DC, join the party. Let's come uh, up here real quick and talk Grand Funk real quick. Yeah, well, we're Grand. Um, but I just was. I don't know. I like the Todd Rundgren stuff, and I like all the later stuff. Born to Die, I actually like that. Well, you know, I, it could be okay, but I haven't listened to it because I didn't like all the girls of the world beware. So I thought, okay, well, they're done, you know. Was it that you think that... Uh, it's it's produced, too commercial. Is that what it well, was? In, in the beginning, they were just good rock and roll. Mm -hmm. and then it, And then Todd really took them to that commercial level. But don't you think that they needed Todd to really, he was able to take those songs. He was able to look at Dom Brewer and go, this guy is being underutilized, you know? Well, no, I, I like what Todd did on, on that album. I don't know. I haven't heard anything else he did with him. Well, you need to check out Shining On, I swear to God. But you know, I, here's a good analogy. Todd did for Grand Funk what uh, Michael McDonald did for the Doobie Brothers. Gave my shot in the arm, lift them. What do you think? I, mean, I love the Doobie Brothers before mm -hmm. Michael McDonald. I like prefer the Doobies before. But he made a ton of money. And he did. They they went big with a McDonald's yeah. talented guy. Well, some people think that, you know, the Michael McDonald stuff is when they, uh, is the worst stuff. I don't necessarily think that. Well, it's not the best, but it's not It's bad. my favorite stuff. It's like uh, China Grove and uh, Listen to Music. Those big big hits like that, uh, the Tom Johnson City Midnight stuff. Lady. I like all that early stuff. This is just all right by me. Yeah, we did a ranking of uh, those Todd Rundgren albums. I forget where I put Faithful. I think yeah, he he nailed half of Faithful's that. brilliant. I like yeah, I like the idea good. that he did all those covers to prove what he could do in the studio. But if we had Wait a minute. Which side's the the second side's with the covers, right, Harry? I think I think so. If we that's had, the only good side. You don't like the ones with just the regular tracks. 
It's okay. It's okay. Oh, I think that's he's coming great. to he's coming here to uh, I think he's gonna be in Tacoma, but I'm not gonna go. I saw him years ago. Well, Todd's gotta pay off that house in Hawaii, so here here's a story. You know, he owns a tiki bar in Hawaii. His wife oh, does. does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um that but is I signed up when when the when computers first came on board and people were getting them for their home use and stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh Todd did a, a monthly thing where he would do electronic music and you could download it and you had to sign up for it. So I did. I signed up on my credit card. I never got anything, nothing. So I go to, I go to see Ringo in, in Berkeley and we're waiting by the stage door and Todd pulls up and Todd gets out of the car and he walks by and I say, Hey Todd, you still owe me money. And he stops. He goes, what? <laughs> I said I signed up for your thing, your electronic music. I got nothing. He goes, "We gave everybody a refund on those." I said, "I never got a refund." I said, "Wow, give me an autograph and we're even." So he came over and signed my ticket stub for oh, me. Oh, that's good, right Harry. I wow. like that. That give is an autograph. Look at this. Yeah. We've got DC Tune Time in the in the chat now. Hey all, DC Tune Time. It took me a while. It took me a while to get everything set up because I finished my work day for today. Was upstairs since so I had to reboot everything downstairs. You see, you know you're practically on call. So when I <laughs> summon you, you need to be ready. Oh, I got down here as quick as I could. All right. Oh, that we got to represent. We got DC here. We got to represent. Well, we were talking Grand Funk. Super Girl, DC. All right. There you go. go. Let's get going. DC has his own merch. I don't know. Hey, yeah, it's the wizard. It DC on it. So, what was it about it? Because Harry likes, he loves that live album. He loves the energy of it. Yeah, that's what, what when we discussed that first live album, that's what I kept on saying, Grant. It's just you could feel that energy from the stage. It's palpable. Yeah. When you listen yeah. to that like album, you, it's so energized. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe that you didn't catch that. that. Didn't work for you. I don't, want, I don't you. care for the mix, and I don't care for Mark Farner's noodling on that record because <laughs> he sounds great as a guitar player in the studio, but live he it just didn't. And and the fuzz bass drives yeah, me up the wall. Yeah, the yeah, fuzz to, bass. Yeah, yeah I, sure. I, I got that one. To show you how off base I was on that front. Oh yeah, that, that first uh, Mark Farner album is very good. And when we you listen good. to that, and you listen to Flint, who were the other three guys that formed a band after Grand Funk, you really saw where the real talent was. Because that Mark Farner's first solo album blows. See, that I like that record. We reviewed that album. We reviewed that, and we gave that a good review. Yeah, the only reason I, think I have it is because it's signed. I've, I haven't even listened to it. I it's think, a good album. I think yeah. that gets a harsh. Maybe show. I will. Maybe I will on your uh, recommendation. Yeah, it's a very re reflective and somber album, like the cover kind of uh, points you in that direction. But uh, that's a good one. I just you think Greg Frost still with him at that point. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. in the casket with him. He's I think in one of them. <laughs> I think Craig Frost was. Uh, shot in the arm kind of like the michael mcdonald thing because you know once they had of course you know mark was playing a lot of keyboards but craig frost is, was such a brilliant player and i added, think great i think great. so much to them grand funk did all they could do as a trio and craig frost came in at the right yeah, time to allow that. them to progress further as a band was he uh, he wasn't on survival was he no no he his first album with them was phoenix but he wasn't an official band member until American Band. But he was on the Phoenix album. Somehow one of my... Ch Something's happened with my settings. Because normally when I put the comments up, it doesn't block people out. I don't know what happened. Speaking of Todd Rundgren, I, I love something, anything. It's To me, that's a Desert Island record right there. Yeah, Harry... Uh, Grant and I had just talked about Todd on one of the recent broadcasts, and we're begging Todd just one more time record an album of pop gems. He's got it in him. Just one more time. I'd love to hear it. Yeah, the the Naz stuff. 
you know. Or that too, yeah. yeah. I'm going to see Todd next week, so I'll be very curious oh, as who, to, who's he uh, playing with. Just himself. Uh, he's got Chasm with him and Prairie Prince and the uh, horn player and keyboard. He does both. Bobby Strickland, that's it. And he's got a new a second guitarist with him. Um, mm. I'm not sure the, his or his other guy just passed. He's playing here locally, pretty here in Tacoma. It's like 20 minutes from the house. I really should go. Yeah, his his first show on the the tour he's doing was played last night in Minneapolis, but I'm seeing him next week in Indianapolis. So looking forward to that. <laughs> Loki's having a good time. Loki's funny as hell. I confess I'm yeah, ignorant of the ways of Todd Runger to it. the extent that he is <laughs> indistinguishable to me from Ted Nugent. And I mix him up. How in the world yeah. can you get Ted okay. Nugent and Todd Runger mixed <laughs> up? <laughs> Look, Loki, go right to the bottom. His follow up on that is just brilliant. There you uh, go. Yeah, it's third yeah. For, yeah, at least one of them. It's crazy. <laughs> oh my god! That's funny. Oh, oh Loki. That's oh no, funny. Marlon. Todd Rundgren can sing. Oh no, no, no! It's great. We. I just saw Todd. Not very well. I saw him on the Utopia tour. Now Bruce Kulik giving played away too many Grand Funk. I didn't know that. Well, well it's that uh, Don Brewer version of Grand Funk. Kulik, uh, Bruce Kulik is their main lead player. And the other guy from 38 special does a lot of the Farner vocals. In fact, he looks, if you took Mark Farner, who is about five, seven and made him six foot two, that's what this guy <laughs> that's replacing Mark in the new grand funk kind of looks mm. like the same guy just stretched mm. out much taller. Who, who is it from who, who replaced Bruce Kulik? Um, the guy from the gods, Chatfield. Oh, Mark Chatfield, who played. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, we were just talking about them. Yeah, we now, just talked about the gods with an S or a Z? Z. Z. Here's the picture. Here, I'll throw up the gods because we just I used that in the graphic. Happened. Here's the gods right here. They're a rock and roll machine. Yeah, absolutely. And Mark Chatfield's the one on the left with the uh, female on the back with of the, the gal. Yeah. And Gallo. here's another band Mark Chatfield was in called Rosie. Oh, was it wasn't members of Uriah? Didn't they go Uriah Heap go on to a band called Gods? You're right. With it was just G O D S, I think, just the Gods. Okay, yeah, that was pre Uriah Heap. They had okay. a record store day release, and that album's actually really good. If anybody's heard it, it's good. So anyway, there's that. So wait, how do we get to this? Stretch Armstrong. I, I found everybody. My age, I, had a, I had a stretch Armstrong. <laughs> Rock and roll, cartoons, toys. We cover it all here, folks. <laughs> now we do, man. It's, it's pop culture, isn't it? Yeah, all of it. Who wears a shirt? Todd wears a shirt. Well, Ted wears a shirt too now. Thank God. I think a lot of what rubs uh, Grant the wrong way with Grant Funk was Mark Farner's shirtlessness back in the yeah, day. I don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> but, was, yeah, but he was buff. He was he worked. Yeah, oh, was, I don't know. Seventy. Look at that. And, and my look at that. In my in my high school, Mark Farner was uh, quite the thing among the young ladies for sure. Really, that shirtlessness worked for him back in the yeah, day. Yeah, he was young and he had the long oh, hair. Yeah. He was cute. Yeah. Eh. Yep. I don't but care. for a power trio, man, they kick some ass. They yeah, can so you believe the sound that came from three guys? And they, they did every possible thing they could to keep things interesting in a trio, which is not easy to do. So that's all. I wonder why that doesn't work. Shift they need, video you know, they really up need like an audiophile pressing or just some kind of a repressing of the, of their classic albums. Hmm. Maureen says that us women appreciated Mark's shirtlessness. Yeah. See, I'm that backs up DC's opinion. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're supposed to look at those. You know, actually, DC, we were talking about it. Pete Pardo wants to look at those Mark Farner solo albums. The first one that Harry showed is very, very good. The second one where he's on the plane with the meager lunch while the 
obese guy next to him is dining on steak. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not, not quite as good. But that first Farner live, uh, I mean, solo album is fantastic. Trish, I'm going to write that down. I want to see, I want to read that book. What book? Yeah, you're, you're quite the very oh, high bias tape book. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. I had the guy on there. Oh, Ernesto and I interviewed him. Oh, okay. Yeah, there he is. He's writing the comment right below it. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yeah, he was a good guy. Ernesto lined that up. I uh, said, well, well, bring him on. Yeah. So, yeah, check it out. The guy's very knowledgeable on the whole cassette phenomena. I just finished reading the Patty Boyd book. Jeez. Yeah. Pretty messed up. She was now, messed up. Now, which one? Wonderful tonight. Yes. Yeah, I read that. I read. I, I read that too. Yeah, I read All that she too. did is pine for George for pretty much for the rest of her life. Although it's interesting to me, the title of the book was "Wonderful Tonight." She chose the Clapton song rather than the George song for it. So that's yeah. kind of. I don't know. Well, I haven't because, read the book. Yeah. She inspired some pretty incredible music, so she sure yeah. did. Yeah, <laughs> something Layla. She claims that that the reason that Eric Clapton became a heroin addict is because she wouldn't leave George for him. So he spent two years on heroin pining wow. for her. I guess that's a I don't because he couldn't <laughs> handle it. <laughs> she yeah, he quite a woman. The fact that she yeah, I'm leave. gonna say that's kind of a feather in your hat, like uh, you know, oddly. So was he on heroin when she went from George to him? Yes. And then she was able to help get him off heroin, but then he turned right to alcohol, <laughs> which was just as bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It inspires and great he, music and to drink and to drug. Like he, wanted her, he wanted her so bad, and then as soon as he had her, he wasn't interested anymore, and he really didn't, you know. I don't know. He was kind of, they were all fucked up people. The Wizards saw the gods in 79. They opened for the Outlaws. Eric Moore and the band is, was killer. Yeah. Rest in peace, Eric Moore. Yeah. Yeah. I ended up with one Outlaws album, not the UK Outlaws, which are different and an earlier band, but the uh, US. I'm not sure what the question is. What years? Uh, was this when she got together with uh, Cloud? Oh. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's the you one thing like I didn't like. About no, no, no. What year was it? It's in the 70s. She, she kind Early of 70s. time jumps on, uh, throughout the book, and it's hard to figure out what years she's talking about lots of times. Mm. Well, but I think when she married that. Eric, if I'm not mistaken, you read the book, Rachel. Yeah. If, when, when she married, agreed to marry him, she already knew he had another woman pregnant at the time. And still went and still married him. Yeah, because her own George was so what she says, George was fooling around on her. So George was having his flings. Yeah. And George so, was fooling around with Maureen. George Ringo's was fooling around with Maureen. And he was when Ringo was married to Maureen, correct? Yeah. He Ma was yes, there, Maureen right? would, would stay at, at George's house and, and, and Patty would say, you know, I'm not stupid, you know, I know why she's there. Yeah. <laughs> very human stuff, you what know. What the hell is going on? Well, you know people, right? It's That's it's very normal when couples when couples know each other and they're the wife and they're and the marriages are unstable in the first instance, there's problems there. The interesting thing too in the Patty Boyd book is, is she describes the night where they were having a jam session and it was a guitar duel between Clapton and George. And she says the consensus was Clapton won that, that, uh, Ted, a Ted, that guitar. She was real, they were real close with Ronnie Wood too. Spent a yeah. Lot Ronnie Wood. Yeah. His wife, yeah. So I wonder if George always had a thing for Maureen or it was just a, God, how Who could you was? even have you know, a relationship picking? with ring? How could you, I don't know I how you can be that attractive. Really, physically attractive that he would. I don't know. Maybe you know. Just well, I, I mean, yeah, but his personality. He knew her personality. Maybe yeah. she had a feminine, flirty thing that he goes, "Holy crap, that's not bad." You know. <laughs> Maybe she and liked then, him. And he, start, and he, and he starts. Okay. And he starts thinking with the other part of his body rather than this thing. Yeah. <laughs> that can happen. 
<laughs> well, he was George. George seemed like he's pretty horny. I don't know. And then Luckily, she was I'm... really upset when he when he got into uh, the spiritual, the chanting, and he would go all you know hours and hours and hours of just chanting yeah. and ignore her and, and drove her nuts. Yeah, she always said he, she was like neglected. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And she Six. grew up in Kenya. She from a young age for what till nine or ten, I think. Yeah, it's interesting because you see her in uh, Hard Days Night. So the world sees her when George sees her. So cute. Her. Yeah, she was such a cutie little yeah. thing. Yeah. Very yeah. pretty girl and her sister. And then who did her boy's sister married? Uh, Jonathan wrote the song about her. Oh, right? and whistle. Oh, no, no, not Ed no, Russell. Uh, uh, Jenny Fleetwood. married Mick Fleetwood. Yeah. Is, well, that, is that who she married? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it's, there's uh, like in, in the music thing. And yeah, Donovan yeah. was enamored of her. And uh, so he wrote uh, uh, Jennifer Juniper. Jennifer. Yeah. And wasn't uh, Mick Fleetwood doing Stevie when he was married to? Uh, oh, well, that, if Fleetwood. we get into Fleetwood back, no, none of us is getting out alive. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, my didn't. God, what a mess. Didn't, yeah. That's like the moments from the puppets, same sort of scene yeah. there. Yeah, that, that caused, really isn't that why Michelle got uh, booted from the band? Because yeah, going with Denny. with Denny. Yeah. And Mama Cass had a thing for Denny, too. And she was mad at Michelle because she knew that Mama Cass had a thing for Denny. And here she moved in on Denny. But what a mess. The so funny. Well, the funny one with that, and I I laugh at it, but I mean, a lot of people would get offended or whatever, but is Lennon and Dylan in the back of that limo doing teenage boy talk about Mama Cass? Oh, I think she's your fan. I think I think she's good. I go, no, 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 no. I'm pretty sure she's <laughs> Is that when uh, yeah. Dylan's funny. like That's really like stoned? And is that when Lennon's Lennon sick? Or is it Dylan is sick? Which one? When they're riding the limo, what's yeah. that so from? A documentary. Really wasted. It's like um, it's like around the same time as uh, "Don't Look Back," the Penny Maker film. But Lennon looks like he's just tolerating Bob Dylan. It's like Bob Dylan is like annoying him because Dylan's just so stoned. Yeah, the, Lennon you know, seems very straight. Lennon's not as wiped out as as Dylan is, and Lennon's just a little miffed. But it's but there's an ego play going. It's two guys playing alpha male fight with each other. Right? Mm -hmm. And anyway, it's funny, it's that, funny. That Dylan and George ended up being the closest, not yeah. not John. Yeah. Although that makes sense on some level, if John's you know there's too much energy with John yeah. and George being used to, and he's are going guy let let the egos of McC McCartney and yeah. Lennon so knock themselves out. I'm easier around them. Yeah. yeah, so he probably acquiesced more, <laughs> submitted more to Dylan. Oh, Loki, I don't think that's true. You're spreading rumors. <laughs> oh, that Mama Cass I album. Know, I thought, I thought it was the like snort. That David, that Dave Mason yes, album did. with Mama Cass. Oh, it's a new record. Uh, Do you have that, Harry? You probably have that. I, uh, no, I don't. Out of all those records, you don't have that? Um, damn. No. I mean, how many celebrities talk of religion while they're sneaking around their mates? I don't know. You'd have to give me an example. I guess I don't pay attention enough. Yeah, and it was, and also many. Well, I guess many. I don't know. Jimmy Swaggart was the most famous. Oh, I'm saying, and then a week later, he's done at the strip again, picking up another one. It's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, I just don't get it. Alone Together was much better. I've got a copy of Alone Together that folds out and you can hang Dave up and it's got yeah. the marbled vinyl. That's the one I've that got. That one I have. I've got two of those and one on black vinyl. I don't know how many of those I need, but I was just buying them because, you know, that marbled vinyl, I could never tell really the condition of it. Yeah, that's so always. I thought, well, this one might be cleaner than the other one I've got. So I would just keep getting it. You yeah, people do talk about them, see which one plays better. Let it flow. Hey, D Rocker. No one talks Dave Mason. Yeah. Maybe it's time. D, uh, DC, you talk Dave Mason? 
Not enough to get on a show and pontificate. Yeah, I, I couldn't either. I don't, I don't know enough about him. Well, he leaves really traffic so early on. And then uh, and Steve Winwood had those uh, 80s hits that kind of brought him back into prominence. So Steve Winwood generally gets all the um, the attention more so than Mason. Of course, Marlon likes Marlon. Steve Mason. D-Rocker? Yeah. But I don't know. It's okay. I, I like the traffic stuff. But I kind of like the traffic stuff without Dave Mason to be better. What's your um, favorite traffic album? God, I would have to say either Low Spark or John Barleycorn, I think. Yeah, John Barleycorn would be mine. And then then Low Spark. So we're, we're in the same, yeah. But I don't mind, you know, the, the Dave Mason stuff. But I just think. I don't know. I like just the Steve Winwood stuff, really. I think that's where they really started to come together. And I don't know how committed Dave was, you know, because he would come and go. And I don't know. Marlon, you like Mr. Fantasy? Is that the one you like? That's the biggest one. I would Marlon say. will like anything that the opposite of what I like. That's what I've noticed. Huh. With Marlon. Marlon, are you being difficult, Whipping Grant? <laughs> Driver yeah, I like Driver's Seat. seat. That's yeah, the one yeah. hit wonder. Yeah, well, I've only good, heard Driver's Seat. Song. I've never heard any other other catalog. Yeah, no, that, well, they had, I, I think they had two albums. Is that well? That'd be an easy. I have one. the album with Driver's Seat, but I don't think I've listened to the whole thing. I, I, I've played it through. I, you know, Driver's Seat is the selling point on it. Low Spark and Shootout at the Fantasy Factory. Now, Shootout always kind of got poor reviews i don't know why i just don't think it doesn't have quite well shootout i mean low spark got bad reviews back in the day low spark's just a good jam just put yeah. it on and let it go those uh, i hate to bring up cds but those island remasters sound really good in the traffic mm -hmm. stuff and they got bonus tracks don't they mm-hmm but then they ended up putting out, I don't have any of these. Didn't they do a deluxe edition of John Barleycorn, I think, that had like that whole second disc of that live show? Um, Not I never, know. I think so. But hmm. I've never, I've never seen it. I never bought it. <sighs> Excuse me. Yeah, I would buy that if it was out there. Yeah, Ark of a Diver is a good album. But I never cared for much of Steve Winwood's 80s output yeah, because it was thing. so commercial. You looked at how progressive and how uh, creative Steve Winwood was with traffic, and then he just started putting out commercial slop. But, you know, I don't get it. Of course, you know, you can. Yeah. But I mean, it was part in time. It was of the time, like Paul Carrick, the same kind of sound, Winwood. Carrick, all those guys had a kind of a similar sound, uh, a similar ethos that was coming out that were listening, you know, bring me a higher love. John Barleycorn is great. That Apparently that's a very good album. I don't have that You one. don't have it? Oh my God. Uh, it's Freedom a Rider and Glad. Oh. The only one I got is Low Spark. So, oh my know. God, Rachel, you've got to get at least all the Spark, uh, high you high high catalog. You don't have John Barleycorn? No. Have I you heard don't. it? I haven't even heard it, I don't think. Oh, oh wow. Good. Oh, look, there's BM Bolt. I know Always what late like. to the party, DC. Always late to the party. We got just about everybody from the warehouse here. We got BM Bolt. We got John the Music Nut, Ernesto. I music um, of the whole crew. Including uh, DJ Trish and D Rocker and. Uh, I guess better late than never. Of course, Marlon. Marlon's here. <laughs> Yeah, still should have been, been here right at when we started, but that's okay. Well, I'm fine. It's a nice little doc. I think I'm nice yeah. Well, I don't know. I think we've probably uh, wrapped enough for tonight. What do you sure, think? I'm what very, I'm, I'm totally relaxed. It was, it's always fun just to hang out for a little bit. Touch it. It's good for the community, I think, because you're doing know. your thing, and then I come in, and it just brings different points of contact. I think it's a lot of fun. And you got a great show over here, Grant. Congratulations on all the channel growth. Well-deserved. Everything's coming together. 
DC <laughs> Tim. Uh, hey, good. Rachel, it's nice for uh, to finally kind of meet you. I, I get on your program and comment, yeah. but this is the first time I've been on a show with you and Harry, so it's nice to yeah, good you know, meet, you. meet you face to face, so to speak. Yeah, there you go. Uh, tonight was a night of healing. That's nice. I don't know where that's coming from. So much <laughs> Hallelujah, ladies and gentlemen. Hallelujah. Oh, but, did anybody uh, see what happened to John Mellencamp at his concert? Yeah. Think about oh, yeah, yeah. I think he got a little pissed off. He's that guy that wants you to get off of his yard. <laughs> He's become that. Yeah. yeah I like his grumpy. music. I really do like his uh, music. Well, everybody does. I mean, he had so many crazy. I've got Pink House. This is uh, the one I, the only one I've ever owned from him. And I got it back in the collection. I wanted it. But, you know, it's just one of those things. People feel strong. Harry and I are always going at each other on my show because we have different political ideas. But the thing is, it's like, at the end of the day, you're the musician. Just entertain the people, and don't fight with your audience. Just rock with them. You know? Yeah, you're, you're never you're never going to win that from the stage when the audience starts to kind of turn a little bit. No, they all, you'll never win it back. Smooth, win it back. Smooth it over. Yeah, exactly right. So, well, there's dementia cat. Yeah, good. Uh, speaking of healing, he's on he's on meds and he's doing much better. So we may have him for a little while longer. That cat's but, um, got dementia. Yeah. Bless your cat. Well, mm. bless your cat. Hey, uh, Grant, thanks yeah. again for, for having me up. And Yeah, uh, we'll do it again. Really nice seeing DC too. It's quick with the fun thing to actually put the face. Well, I know what he looks like. And I've seen his videos. Well, and Harry, <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow morning. Let's battle it out. Let's get Trump. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, boy. All right, everybody. Yeah, All right, thanks yeah, yeah. everybody for uh, coming yeah, on. Yeah, everybody, shit. It's just about talking music and hanging out. Yeah. That's all this is about. We'll do it again next month. Hey, everybody, and, uh, uh, thanks right. everybody yeah, for showing up, and thanks panel for coming here. So, oh, my pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. All right, have a good night, hey, everybody. everybody. Bye for good now. Night. So long, folks. <laughs>